There's a lot of buzz on the web right now about Kindle and how to get an ebook published on the Kindle Bookstore, and in fact, how to actually become a Kindle publisher yourself. Becoming a Kindle publisher offers anyone who's looking for a way to make money online the opportunity to publish their own ebooks and make a significant amount of money in the process. As a Kindle publisher, you can quickly publish as many ebooks as you like and in virtually any niche that you can think of. In the following training modules, we're going to take a look at the Kindle Publishing Network. We'll show you how to become both an author and publisher yourself and turn it into consistent monthly income. We'll be looking at the various facets of the Kindle Publishing System over the next few minutes, so sit back and enjoy the presentation. Learning Module 1, Traditional Publishing versus Self-Publishing. Your module objectives are to understand the fundamental differences between traditional and self-publishing, and to differentiate the economical advantages posed by the two respective publishing methods. Traditional Publishing. In the traditional publishing system, the author's sole purpose is to provide the idea for the manuscript. The publishing house handles everything else. In addition, the manuscript is open to acceptance, addition, or rejection from the publication house. First, when the author completes the manuscript, the author writes a proposal to the publishing house. The editor then reads through the manuscript and decides whether it should be accepted or rejected. If it's rejected, the author can then offer it to other publishers for rewrite. On the other hand, if accepted, the publishing house buys the rights from the writer and pays them future royalties. The house then completes the design and packages, markets, and sells the book. One of the best advantages of going with traditional publishing is the prestige you gain from going with a well-known publishing company. However, on the downside, you can expect a lower profit share per book, usually at a 10% royalty payment, as the lion's share of profits goes to the publishing house. What is meant by self-publishing? In the self-publishing system, the author is responsible to oversee all aspects of the writing, including the manuscript, any required proofreading, editing, design layouts, as well as the entire marketing and selling of the book. As a self-publisher, you retain control over your book and enjoy a much higher profit margin versus going with a traditional publishing company. This means you can update it anytime you wish, there's no need to get your book approved by an editor, and you can work at your own pace. However, remember that you can always switch to the traditional method of publishing if you like. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. The Kindle Bookstore 101. The objectives for Module 2 are an introduction and understanding on the operations of Kindle Bookstore, to understand the value of the Kindle Bookstore, and an overview of how to publish on the Kindle Bookstore. If you've chosen the self-publishing route, it means that Amazon will be your primary sales channel. It offers a number of advantages when publishing your book. First off, let's take a look at the history of the Kindle Bookstore. In 2007, Amazon introduced the Kindle, which I'm sure you know is a portable electronic reading device. It makes use of wireless connectivity to allow users to browse, search and download ebooks, magazines, blogs, newspapers, and other digital media to your computer or mobile device. From its original 88,000 digital titles, the library quickly grew to more than 765,000 titles by 2011. The benefits of the Kindle Bookstore. Think of the Kindle Bookstore as a giant search engine for books. Any topic you can think of is probably published on Kindle and available for download. One of the greatest benefits with the Kindle Bookstore is the convenience in finding and storing books by the thousands, if you like, on your Kindle. You can literally have a complete library of information in the palm of your hands whenever you wish. Though relatively new, book sales from the Kindle Bookstore are increasing at a remarkable pace. With the success of the device, more and more people are buying books electronically versus traditional hard copies. Amazon is also very clever in offering a Kindle app for every platform there is to expand their customer base. In terms of volume, the Kindle Bookstore offers a much more competitive offering than the big boys Barnes & Noble. If you plan to self-publish your own ebooks, then selling your ebook via the Kindle Bookstore is a must. But how exactly do you do this? Kindle Direct Publishing Program. Here's a brief overview of how to publish your ebook on Kindle. We'll go into more detail later in Module 8. Being a published author on the Kindle Bookstore is pretty straightforward. This is made possible through the Kindle Direct Publishing Program, or KDP. Once you become a publisher, you can participate in the 70% royalty program, and your book will become available on all Kindle devices. Publishing on the Kindle Bookstore. To publish your ebook, you need to sign up for an account and follow the necessary steps. It's recommended that your book is uploaded in DOC or PRC formats, but other formats are accepted as well. 
Any links that you place in your ebook should be edited to be human readable so they can be typed into a browser. Formatting your ebook according to Kindle standards is a must. Page breaks must be avoided and proper coding must be observed to make it appear the way that you want to. You can always make changes after uploading it as you see fit. To make it easier to find your ebook, you'll want to select your keywords carefully. Keep in mind that rankings affect its exposure in the marketplace and with thousands of other titles, you want to get this right for maximum exposure. Product images are optional, however, are highly recommended as they help in both selling your new ebook and building your credibility as an author. Images may be uploaded in both TIF or JPG formats of at least 500 pixels, although 1200 pixels is recommended. We'll cover pricing strategies later in Module 4, but as a Kindle publisher, you generally have the option to list your ebook at any price. However, you want to keep in mind that Kindle advertises these to be $9.99 or less. Ebooks are typically low-priced items. In addition, Amazon provides some pretty cool features for their publishers. When someone makes a purchase, they will pair books in the Bought With section, giving you greater exposure for your books and more opportunities for sales. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Learning Module 3 Determining your readers. Your module objectives are to develop an understanding of the different reader groups, to understand the importance of reader-oriented writing, and to develop an understanding of how to write for a specific reader group. Before you begin to write, you need to consider the following main points. Who is your target audience? What is your purpose? And what is your content going to be? Determining who your readers and target audience are will be one of the most important aspects of writing. Before you start writing, you need to know who it is that you're going to be writing for. In other words, you want to narrow everything down and arrive at a point where you can start focusing on the main content of your ebook. Defining your considerations. The best way I found to do this is to create a checklist for yourself of the main points and considerations you must take before you can begin putting your ebook together. The following is a list of considerations you can use that will help in determining the nature and depth of content you will need for your ebook. However, it's up to you to decide which ones are relevant and which ones are not depending on your subject niche. Age, background experience, depth of topic, economic status, education, ethnicity, gender, location, profession, interests, and loyalty to your writing. Every decision you make about your book will be based on these criteria. This includes vocabulary, sentence structure, tone, humor, and imagery, among others. In short, the content of your ebook should be written with your audience in mind. Writing your ebook. After you start writing your ebook, it's a good idea to keep this checklist handy as you progress. This will help to keep you focused on writing for your selected audience based on the items on your list. If you find yourself getting off track, then make the necessary changes and readjust. As you can see, this means that you have a lot of research to do before starting your ebook. This is best done during the initial planning phases where everything is still being laid out. Writing for a specific audience also increases your chances of success. Be sure that everything about the book is focused to meet the considerations you've defined, including language, colors, fonts, layouts, cover, and of course the title of your ebook. This is why it's so important to spend the time and effort from the very beginning into making sure that your ebook is well focused. Example of your target audience. Five years ago, no one would have known what an ebook was. This is how new this concept is. As such, ebook readers belong to the younger crowd of generations. More often than not, these are the people who grew up with technology as their playmate. Your audience, then, is technologically savvy and used to the on the go modern lifestyle. If you're writing an ebook aimed at young adults in the early 20s, there's a good chance that it will do well in the Kindle bookstore. The majority of people who make up this crowd do their shopping online anyway they're more likely to turn towards their mobile devices to read books as well. Conversely, an ebook aimed at an older audience may not enjoy as much success. Writing about popular activities after retirement may be profitable in bookstores, but it may stagnate online. However, with some good research, you can identify exactly where you need to be. This is another good reason for identifying your audience ahead of time. It lets you see if your ebook idea will flourish or totally bomb. Many experts believe that this generation gap is set to disappear eventually. But for the meantime, however, it's here, and you have to consider this in your decision in writing your ebook. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Learning Module 4 Finding the Balance Between Going Mainstream and Targeting a Niche. 
Your module objectives are to develop an understanding on the differences between going mainstream and targeting a niche, to understand the potential that each of the approaches have, and to develop an understanding on the challenges in the two approaches. Mainstream versus Niche Writing for audiences means having to choose between mainstream topics and more specialized niche topics. This is one of the most crucial decisions you'll have to make as a writer. Each one has its pros and cons as we ask ourselves these two important questions. Should I write an ebook focusing in a specific area, or is it better to write an ebook tailored to a broader range of audiences? Going deep with niches. Writing for a niche specific audience is a good thing because of the profit potential involved. However, a lot of research is required in collecting the needed details of your particular niche. As such, the kind of writer needed when going deep is someone who has the knowledge about something specific. You can quickly build an online reputation here and be recognized as an expert in the field by using this approach. Niche writing involves a lot of thought on what to write about. It's not necessarily about writing things you like or what people enjoy reading. It's all about providing information to those who want to pay for it. It takes a special kind of writer to come up with good content for niche topics. This means that there is less competition, which is great in terms of making a profit and becoming an established publisher. Apart from enjoying less competition, your audience is also much more targeted and primed to make a purchase as you are often providing a solution to a problem. Going deep with niches means that your writing will be more manageable as it will generally be more specific and geared towards a limited segment of the market. On the other hand, as previously mentioned, you will need to spend a lot of time on research to become an expert. Otherwise, you'll find it difficult to come up with good compelling content. Niche writing is time consuming since it requires some heavy thinking and late nights. Another factor to consider is that not all niches are profitable. Making the wrong decision could spell the end of your career right out of the gate. Going wide and mainstream. Going wide means you write for a broader audience. Instead of coming up with topics for teenage girls, you can expand your base to include teenagers in general. This style of writing is more versatile and can fit in any writer's personal style. When you go wide, it's much easier to write an ebook. You can pick up any topic you want and start coming up with contents in a matter of minutes. Keeping this up is easy as well. There's no need for long hours spent on research. Writing for a more mainstream crowd is not without its pitfalls, however. Yes, it's easier to go wide, but this also means you will have a lot of competition and will be more difficult to make money, especially as a newcomer. In addition, marketing and promoting your ebook will be difficult and involves promotional and SEO costs that you will have to budget for. But like anything else, there's always some level of product costs you will face, especially with just getting started. Also, as a new publisher, it will be very challenging for you to build an online reputation as well as a loyal following of readers, making it imperative to have outstanding content. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Welcome to the Kindle Publishing System Learning Module 5, Quantity and Quality, Pricing Your Ebook to Sell. Your module objectives are to develop an understanding on customer expectation for ebooks, to develop an understanding on what constitutes the cost for an ebook, to develop an understanding on the pricing strategies with ebooks. What are your customers' expectations? It's vital that you understand your customers' expectations so you can build a strategy of how you want to price and market your ebook. Here's a few of the main expectations your customers will be looking for. Is the information in the ebook accurate? It's especially important to make sure the content in your ebook is accurate or your days as a publisher will be short lived. Is the ebook worth your time? Your readers will be asking themselves if your ebook is worth spending the time to read. Your content will need to grip the reader with compelling and interesting content. Is it worth the money? It's obvious the best way to make sure you become a successful Kindle publisher is to make sure you deliver an outstanding product that people will be more than willing to buy. Is it cheap? And of course, what's the price? We all know that we're attracted to lower prices. The important thing to remember is to make sure you deliver the high quality along with the low price. Cost Comparison as we see in this graph, there are more items that make up the cost of printed books. Thus, the more costs incurred, the higher the price you have to charge to cover those costs. In comparison, overhead costs of an ebook are much lower and therefore people will expect the price to be low. You can sell your ebook for any price you want, as already mentioned in the previous chapter. Overpricing may be tempting, but this is highly discouraged. This will only turn off your potential customers, amounting to small sales figures. In fact, selling at lower prices is the best way to go. Cheap versus expensive. Next, let's look at a quick comparison of ebooks that are cheaply priced versus expensively priced. With cheaply priced ebooks, people have a biased thought on ebooks that they should be low cost. Cheaper ebooks can sell better. Business models that are based on sales volume. 
Generally, an ebook at $2.99 sells well on Kindle. Cheaper books tend to be purchased when impulsive buying kicks in. With expensively priced ebooks, overpricing can drive customers away. It can cause you to be boycotted. People will only pay a high price if they are sure of the quality. Only established writers can ask a high price. People think twice before purchasing. Pricing an ebook is easier said than done. There is no printing, shipping, or distributing involved. As such, there is no need to inflate the price to compensate for expenses. Costs are lower and everyone, including your readers, are pretty much aware of this. Advertising and marketing costs for an ebook are not as costly as their printed counterparts. Only a handful of people are required to make an ebook, which means less expense for overhead. The bottom line is that they cost less to produce, which is obviously more popular, especially in today's economy. People are biased against the true worth of downloadable content such as ebooks. Apart from low distribution and production costs, ebooks typically don't exist as hard copies. They can't be shared or copied because of restrictions in proprietary format unless you have a special license. All of these things play in the back of the customer's minds. This is why they expect to pay less for ebooks. It's quite obvious that overpricing is financial suicide. The only thing it's good for is driving potential buyers away. The most customers expect to pay for one copy is $9.99. Even at this level, someone already think twice of hitting the purchase button. Of course, selling at a lower price does pose a risk for your profit as you want to cover your costs also. In general, an ebook price at $2.99 tends to do well in the Kindle bookstore. Volume versus price approach. As we can see by this graph, it's better to price your ebook low and make your income up on volume. Notice how the cheaper price ebook revenues will increase as the volume increases over time, and that's what you're looking for. Selling at lower prices also has another benefit in terms of gaining profit. People don't mind making a purchase when they see a low price. They won't think twice about clicking the purchase button. More often than not, people will act on impulse and buy a low price ebook as soon as they see it. For instance, suppose that you're selling an ebook at $9.99. Selling one copy is definitely a good thing for profit. However, selling a lot of copies poses as a challenge. It's just difficult to convince people that an ebook is worth that much. Now, assume that you're selling your ebook at $2.99. Sell one copy, and there's not much of a difference. On the other hand, multiply these sales to 100, and you would have sold a total amount of $300. This simple example highlights one important fact. Selling at a lower price and higher volumes is more profitable than selling at a higher price with low volumes. Just simple math. When people see lower prices, they automatically consider making a purchase. This holds true for any product or service sold online or offline. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Professional Editing – An Objective Evaluation Your module objectives are to develop an understanding on editing and to differentiate self-editing and professional editing. By definition, editing means prepare written material for publication by correcting, condensing, or otherwise modifying it. It's important because it improves the formatting, style, and accuracy of text. It uncovers errors that can affect the quality, and it also eliminates major risks for loss of sales. Editing remains an important element even in ebook writing. This is one of the major influences on your ebook success. Proper editing does not guarantee success, but it does eliminate one of the major risks of a loss in sales and reputation. Next, let's look at some different types of editing. Basically, you have two choices when it comes to editing. You either do the editing by yourself or you have it done professionally. Some writers decide to edit their own work. It takes a lot of time, costs a lot, and tends to be emotionally invasive. Others just cannot bear to hear what needs to be fixed in their work. After all, the hard work you put into it, you cannot be blamed for wanting to skip this part. Editing is a critique that is why many writers decide against it. In response, some writers just decide to take matters into their own hands. More specifically, they decide to edit their own work. Most do it to save money and cut down on expenses. Having the service outsourced means spending money after all. Another thing of importance is to avoid wasting time as well. Pouring over someone's work can take a while. More than these two reasons, it's the emotional toll that many writers want to avoid. When personal feelings are used, the editor tends to have a biased opinion towards the ebook under scrutiny. As such, this can be very bad for turning up a profit. Proper editing uncovers errors that need to be corrected. In the process, you as the writer should make the necessary changes to make your ebook better. With a mask of emotions on, you can easily overlook these errors and inadvertently publish bad copies. It's quite easy for people to pick up on these errors, and when they do, you will start to lose your credibility as a good writer. 
the importance of professional editing. In place of self-editing, you should consider hiring a professional to do the job for you. Professional editors are capable of setting their emotions aside and focus on improving your work. This helps reveal anything that needs to be changed, improved, or taken out of your ebook. The end result is an ebook with better quality which your readers will admire. Of course, there is a fine line between hiring a professional and asking your friend to do the editing for you. Friends tend to lack the critique needed for editing an ebook. They may have the best intentions at heart, but the best does not always come out of this. They often lack the ability to make sure that the message of your work is delivered. Sure, professional editing does cost a bit and takes some time to complete. However, do consider the things you are getting out of it. Think of it as an investment that ensures better sales once the report comes up. Before you publish, hire a professional editor to ensure the quality of your work. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Ebook covers, making or breaking sales. Your module objectives are to develop an understanding on the significance of ebook covers and to gain an understanding on how to get good designers at low costs. Covers make a good first impression. Visual stimulation is great at turning potential buyers into paying customers. Covers are your first priority at convincing people to buy your ebook and not your competitors. Having a professional looking cover also builds up your reputation as a good and reliable writer. Better product visualization. More importantly, this helps people visualize what they are about to purchase. In a sense, this is where the content of your ebook begins. If they see your ebook as something that provides the answers they are looking for, they'll have no second thoughts on buying it. People do judge the content by the cover of an ebook, and you should always keep this in mind. Having a bad cover is bad for business, plain and simple. Customers will only suspect the quality of your work. Some may even go as far as questioning its legality. Buyers beware would be the perfect slogan here. Good titles bring sales. Apart from images, a good title gets you a long way as well. A title that is carefully written also acts as a good attention grabber. Remember that the purpose of a title is to provide a glimpse of the content of your ebook. The best titles tickle your customer's fancy and excite their senses, and you want to make sure that you get this right. Hire a professional for a great looking cover and avoid freebies. You must avoid a bad cover at all costs. While there are plenty of free templates scattered all over the internet, it's best to ignore these. You can't rush quality and letting a graphic artist do his or her thing is a much better idea. This also means that you'll have to spend a little money for a good cover. Outsource. Many ebook writers say they don't have the resources to create a good cover for their work. Luckily, this part of the ebook can be outsourced as well. Help easily comes your way when you hire an artist to do the job for you. The good news is that there are plenty of graphic artists you can hire on the web at any given time. All you need to do is upload a job listing at the appropriate site and you're good to go. Sooner or later, freelancers will answer the ad. Good freelancers can be found at Fiverr, where everything is 5 bucks. When hiring for help, be sure that you do an extensive background check before signing them onto the team. Ask for their portfolio and see if they meet your standards. Finally, be sure that they can meet the deadline you set and you're all set. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Putting it all together, how to publish your ebook on Kindle. Your module objectives are to understand the steps to publish on Kindle and the walkthrough of the process for publishing on Kindle. Before getting started, you need to have your ebook prepared. Amazon sets the standards for formatting, so be sure to edit accordingly. The Kindle Digital Platform, also known as DTP, requires a simple HTML code without any CSS style sheets. Other formats such as DOC and PDF are acceptable, but HTML conversion is preferred. You can do this by saving your document on MS Word to HTML. Web page filtered. Also, page numbers, footers, and headers must be removed since Kindle reflows everything according to reading settings and font size. The table of contents should also have links to each section it refers to. Finally, two cover images, one in full color and one in grayscale, should be included in your preparation. The upcoming slides will walk you through step by step how to set up and publish your ebook on Kindle. Step 1 Log in or sign up. Go to this link in your web browser, log into your account or sign up if you don't already have an account. Step 2. Add an item. Click Add New Item on the following page. Expandable sections which need to be filled in appear under the heading that says My Shelf. Step 3. Enter your product details. Enter your product details which include the title, description, note the limit of 4000 characters, and keywords among others. Enter an ISBN if you have one, otherwise Amazon will assign one for tracking reference. Leave the publisher field blank if you don't have one. 
This is where you upload your cover image as well. Note the option to enable or disable digital rights management. When you're done, click on Save Entries. Step 4. Confirm Content Rights. Confirm your content rights. Select radio buttons for all the territories where you have sale or distribution rights. Check the box to confirm that you have the right to upload content. Step 5. Upload and Preview. Browse and find your file and upload your content accordingly. Be sure that the file type is accepted by the Kindle Store. Step 6. Enter Price. Enter the retail price. It's up to you how much you want to sell your ebook over the Amazon Kindle Store for. The minimum amount is set at 99 cents and the maximum is $200. Note that Amazon keeps the lion's share of profits. Authors can retain as much as 70% of the price, so be sure to consider this when pricing. Step 7. Publish your ebook. When the dust settles, your ebook has already been uploaded to the Kindle Bookstore. The process will take around 24 hours to complete. Additional tips. If you made a mistake on your ebook and only realize this after uploading, be sure to upload an edited version. It will overwrite the original without a hitch. Cover images should be in JPG or TIF format and around 400 by 600 pixels on the longest side. Keywords affect how people will find your ebook. As such, you want to put a lot of thought into which ones you'll be using. Getting this right maximizes your exposure and puts you on top of the rankings. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video, which will be our last in the series. Recap. Now that you have a grasp on the basic concepts of selling ebooks, it's time to apply everything that you've learned. When you finally decide to self-publish your ebook, the next crucial step to take is to sign up for an account on the Kindle Bookstore. Having one makes it possible to sell in one of the largest digital media stores in the world and it's the potential beginning for you to become an author. Identify your audience. Determining who your readers and target audience are is probably one of the most important aspects of writing as it establishes the direction you'll be going in. You need to know who you're going to be writing for, so you need to get this identified right from the start. Select niche or choose mainstream approach. As a writer, you'll have to pick topics which are mainstream or niche based. The difference is enough to dictate whether you will enjoy success or suffer from failure. In general, though, writing for niche topics is more profitable due to the less competition and more trust and credibility as an expert writer. So it's vital to identify if you're going to use the niche or mainstream approach. Smart pricing. Pricing has a lot to do with the success of a product or service, among other things. For ebooks, it's best to stay on the low to average scale to keep attracting buyers for more profits through higher volumes. Maximize online presence. Lastly, you should employ a strategy on how to maximize your ebook's online exposure. One method may not be enough, so you should be prepared to conduct multiple campaigns at once. So the next step is to take action. Step outside of your comfort zone and tell yourself, I'm going to do this, and before you know it, you will become a successful Kindle publisher. Good luck, and thanks for watching. Check out the Kindle resource PDF in your download file for some valuable online resources to help you become a successful Kindle publisher.